is going on Mopar fam it is a beautiful Sunday morning and today I think I'm going to tackle the stall converter today we're going to install the edge racing 3400 stall converter in frostbite and we're going to do it old school style baby on the ground yes get some old piece of cardboard so before we do surgery how about we uh open the splab exhaust cut out one more time Close it up. All right, guys, I'm gonna go over a few things that you might need that may help you out if you're gonna try to tackle a torque converter or stall converter yourself on your Ram truck. Today here in Georgia, it's supposed to be about 93, 94. It's gonna be hot as shit. So a fan, I would highly recommend a fan. Um, don't have to have a fan, but it may keep your balls from melting. So I highly recommend a fan. Other thing you're gonna need is gonna be a transmission jack. Now you don't have to have a transmission jack. It definitely helps. You can usually rent them. You can probably borrow one. But a transmission jack will definitely help a lot. Um, it just, it's a much bigger than a floor jack. Let me zoom in here. So you can see the plate is adjustable and there's much more surface there to hold a transmission on it. Plus you can actually adjust the angle, the pitch, you know, up and down. It, the plate tilts, it's very adjustable. Not to mention the jack itself goes very high so very very useful tool now you can do it with just regular floor jack i've done it before on a floor jack uh, if you have some help you know an extra person helping you out you know that can be done as well it just you have to kind of be careful and balance it because you have a much smaller plate trying to hold a bigger object but you can do it with a floor jack and or you might just be a big cock strong dude and you can just hoof that dude out with your hands. Um, I'm not that guy, not gonna lie. So, but they're not terribly heavy, but they're pretty hefty. These 545s do weigh a little bit, but you can hoof one out, you know, if you got some help. Other than that guys, I'm gonna quit uh, jibber jabbering. We're gonna get to work here. I'm gonna try to get this thing done today, guys. I wanna try to get it back together and running today. Um, and Hopefully hit the track this Friday and see what it knocks off on our 60 foot. So, hell yeah, let's get going. All right guys, step one, we're gonna disconnect the battery, all right? And that's because we're gonna be pulling off the starter and we don't want to short or, you know, arc the starter wires out on the frame somewhere. Next step. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna be doing, guys, is we have to remove the JBA Y-pipe section. And we're gonna be unbolting the driver's side long tube right here from the pipe. And as you can see, I welded mine instead of clamping it like it, you know, it comes in the kit. So we're gonna unbolt the passenger side long tube right here from the Y pipe and then my idea is then we have to remove and unbolt the transmission cross member and 
the transmission cross member as you see goes all the way across the bottom of the transmission and then I'm gonna put my floor jack under the tail of the transmission just to kind of hold it up and when we remove this transmission cross member I should be able to lower the entire exhaust setup Y pipe and then the rest of my exhaust as you see we have hangers holding everything on so we should be able to completely remove the exhaust completely out of the way when we get rid of the transmission cross member right here so that is the plan so that's what we're going to do we're going to get the battery unhooked and then we're going to work on getting this cross member out and the exhaust system down all right guys so as you can see we have the entire exhaust system removed that is how the exhaust is on frostbite right now some of you guys may not know but we have actually dumped it right before the rear axle cut out right before the mufflers Dynomax mufflers into the JBA Y pipe <clears throat> but let's uh, get under the truck I'll show you what we got going on here So as you guys can see, obviously the exhaust is gone. We did remove the cross member right here and show you a little trick for doing that. If you get you a strap, you can put a strap around the tail shaft and just kind of connect it to. There's a couple of spots on the body you can hook the strap to. That's the driver's side. That's the passenger side. And that is currently what is holding up the rear of the transmission. So, with our exhaust all hooked, uh, with our exhaust all unhooked, Next on the list is we need to remove the starter and we need to start unplugging electrical connectors, shift linkage, the transmission uh, PCM plug, and then we need to remove the drive shaft. drive shaft will slide out of the rear of the transmission pretty easily and then down here at the rear end there is four bolts that we will need to remove and then we can remove the whole drive shaft and then on the 545 transmission You have two transmission lines for your cooler and they connect right here. There's actually a special tool to be able to remove those lines, but I'm going to show you how to do it without that special tool. So for right now, I'm going to get the starter off, I'm going to get the uh, connectors out, the drive shaft out. And then we will come over here and I'll show you how to get those lines disconnected without the special tool. So let's continue on. All right, guys. As you can see, stock torque converter is out. Transmission is off. And transmission is right here on the jack. And this is how we're gonna do this one, guys. 
I'm going to leave the transmission right here on the jack. I pulled out the converter, laid it on the ground, and uh, we're going to stick the new edge stall converter in here and then start putting it back together. And for those that are probably wondering, I am just going to leave my stock transmission in the truck for now. We didn't do anything to it. We didn't take it apart. We didn't freshen it. We didn't do nothing. We just lowered it. We're going to shove the converter in it and we're going to send it. Um, basically, we're going to just see how much longer this transmission is going to hold up. And uh, whenever it dies on us, well, they'll, we'll go from there. But I'm going to get this new converter in. So let's go. What's up guys? Alright, so we have the transmission back in place and I wanted to go over a few things with you guys real quick. Um, bear with me, my neighbor's mowing the grass now so you can probably hear the lawnmower, but anywho, the transmission lines. So I put this one back on so I can show you how to do it without the special tools. So this white cap right here, you're going to have to pry it off if you get you a flat tip screwdriver and just kind of gently pop it off like so and then you'll slide this down out of the way off the transmission line and then you're going to see there's like a little metal clip right there holding the line in so to get this off without the special tool the best thing to use is a pick and I have a 90 degree pick here um, any pick with a bend on it will pretty much work but what you're going to do is you're going to find the edge of it right here on the back and get behind it just like so and gently I'm trying to do this with one hand guys so get behind it and then just kind of gently pry it off like so and work it around and then your transmission line will pull right out of the transmission now to put this back together what you're going to do is install this clip back on first but what you want to do is install the ends around the flat spot of the metal so put the clip on the flat spot of the metal and push it back on and in place just like so I'm trying to do this one-handed this is kind of a pain in the butt here and it'll pop back in place like it's supposed to so then when you install your metal line you'll push it back in and you'll hear it and you'll see the clip kind of snap well, I think I missed the camera view on that one but anywho she is on there So there you go. That's how you do that without the tool. Um, I know it was a little shaky. Sorry for that. But I'm trying to do it one-handed. Laying on my back underneath the transmission. So a little bit uh, a little bit of pain in the butt there. But that's pretty much it for those lines. Um, and then of course you're going to slide this cap back over. And that's kind of a real tight fit also. You might be able to push it on with your fingers. I actually had to kind of get it started. And then lightly tap on it with a wrench to get it to snap back on. Uh, but not a big deal there. So we'll put that on in a, just a second. But only other things I wanted to go over, guys, to get your transmission out. Of course, you know, you have a bunch of connectors you got to unplug. The dipstick tube bolts right here. You have to take that bolt out. And then, of course, you got a bunch of bolts up there around the bell housing to take out. And then other thing I want to go over real quick, whoop, running over tools here, is 
obviously you have torque converter bolts you can see this one here and then this one over here so there's four torque converter there's four torque converter bolts that holds on your torque converter to the flex plate uh, which is this guy right here with the uh, ring gear on it for your starter so you have to get these bolts out first before you pull your transmission down so usually you can rotate your motor put a wrench or a ratchet on the crankshaft and rotate it until you see these bolts take them out and then you'll have to rotate the motor again to get to the other two and take those out once you do that then all your bolts for your transmission and all your connectors transmission plug sensors all that stuff once it's unplugged along with unhooking your exhaust and undoing the drive shaft from the rear end you're pretty much good to pull it out along with you got to remove the cross member going across and then the, these things will come out pretty easily not a big deal at all um, I didn't even pull the drive shaft out of the transmission I left it attached and just lowered the whole thing on the ground um, but just be careful when you do slide the drive shaft out of the transmissions they will leak fluid out so just be aware of that you can leave it in and unhook it from the rear and just drop it on the ground like I did or you can slide the transmission or you can slide the drive shaft out it's just gonna leak some fluid so be ready to catch it um, other than that guys I'm gonna get this thing back together and uh, try to start it up here in a second all right guys we are finally done putting a stall converter in frostbite as you can tell I took a little bit of a transmission bath definitely not the cleanest job but it's really not that bad guys um, I spread it out across a couple days I started on it about midday on a Saturday so I put about a good half a day in it on a Saturday and then after work I put a couple hours in it um, two different days so easily doable in one day guys if you start on this thing early in the morning you could finish by nighttime very easily doing it in the driveway by your you know by yourself on jack stands very very doable in a day not that bad honestly pulling this transmission down was really one of the easiest ones I've ever done um, I've pulled a few transmissions out before on other vehicles Mustangs uh, Ford Rangers stuff like that this was actually very easy this was not that bad at all so we have the edge stall converter installed ready to go I'm currently right now draining the oil while it's up on the jack stands I figured might as well go ahead and do an oil change because it was due anyway but other than that she's pretty much good to go I did start the truck it went in gear everything sounds good so definitely going to try to hit the track this week and see what we can do as far as 60 foot time improvement and track time improvement goes. It's still hot as crap over here in Georgia. We're still hitting, you know, mid 90 days. So the DA is going to be bad, but the stall converter should definitely, definitely drop our time pretty decent. I still have some other things to do to the truck. We got to get the valve covers installed from Spalab still. I'm going to try to do that this weekend. Hopefully if I have some good weather, but other than that guys, I hope the video helps you out. I was kind of disappointed in this video to be honest because I really wanted to make it more detailed and broke down much better than I did. Um, but I'm going to be honest guys, doing this on the ground and trying to film a transmission drop and stall converter swap and everything is just about impossible by yourself. Uh, I didn't really have any help. My son did come out and help me every now and then. But basically I did this pretty much by myself. So filming it on the ground on your back, very tight, limited space, and it, it just wasn't happening. So I was trying to film it before I did stuff and after I did stuff. So I hope it did help you out. Um, I know I went over the transmission lines pretty decent as far as unhooking those and uh, reinstalling those without a special tool or anything. So like I said, Hopefully it does some justice for somebody out there that's wanting to tackle a stall converter in their RAM. Definitely not that bad. Really, it's not. It's pretty easy, guys. So in the driveway, like I said, you can do it in about a day by yourself. If you have somebody helping you, definitely could probably break it down much faster than that. But other than that, guys, thanks for all the support. We're just about to hit 10K. And again, 
thank you guys so much for sticking with the channel and supporting the channel. So don't forget, hit that subscribe button, tap the bell button for the notifications, and we'll see you guys on the next one.